Hey you, what is going on guys, Hex, we're back into the brand new video, and we're talking about the anime that just so happens to be one of my two favorites, not going to say that on you probably already know, of the spring so far, and let's get into the episode. So, to start off this episode, we learned Mume is ruthless, she's a badass, and she's not afraid to kill people who feel as if she's an enemy, so that leaves me wondering, what is what has Mume went through? I can't wait to see her backstory, I'm so, I'm, I'm just so... Oh, the anticipation just to learn who she really is is absolutely awesome. Now, she ends up training Ikoma, as you as we'll see in the intro. We, we saw her training ourselves. I didn't expect it to come this soon, but they go into, like, K Kagatuto or something like that. I can't remember the exact name I butchered that. But they go into this big city, and she's like, I can only fight for some amount of time until I get tired, which I'm not sure why that is. Uh, and once again, that, that relates to me wanting to know who, she, who the hell she is. And... We find out that Ikoma's literally nothing on her level, and you find out Mume definitely has been a Kabaneri for a while now. And they, they had, the train ends up having to stop, and I expected campaigns just to freaking start flooding in. I was expecting Ikoma. I wonder where Ikoma's gun is, anyways. We didn't see it in this episode, actually, now to think about it. And I just thought Ikoma and Mume are just about to go and just slay Kabangs, and I thought that was how the humor's kind of be like, oh, okay, so these people are actually, they're all right. Now, they get they get to talking, and she's like, Mume asked, like, Koma, what is that thing in your hand during training I kept hitting that was hurting me? And I'm really wondering what kind of pain she has felt from it. Because right from the beginning, it kind of put, like, a big emphasis on that rock. And we learned that he actually, Ikoma actually got that from his sister, which he actually ended up having to kill his sister because she turned to a Kabaneri. And I always thought that was his mom It kept showing being bitten in the flashbacks, but it actually was his sister, and we get the full flashback now. And Ikoma was, he is scared, and that was his biggest influence. I want, I want to kill these Cabanes, not only because he killed my sister, because I ran away from them. I'm tired of being scared of them. And I think that's why I like Akoma more than I like Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. Simply because Aaron just, I guess he's like Titan this, Titan this, kill that, kill that, and he, he, it's really, it's like he almost doesn't notice his surroundings and what's happened to him in a way. I would say he's just, he's just filled with rage, and Akoma's filled with rage, but I just feel like he has a better understanding of what's going on. Now, we learned Akoma actually had to kill his sister after she was turned into Cobain, and that just. That just, that blows my mind. Like, seeing that and seeing what Ikoma's gone through, we, we actually really care about Ikoma now. Like, we, we, we just absolutely, now we're attached to him. They're doing this anime really good. What studio? High five, you're doing great. Now, <laughs> okay, there's a scene. And, of course, everybody thinks it's the Kurtz. The humans think that, you know, thinks that Cabaneri, or not Cabaneri, but Cabanes are just, it's a, it's a curse. But it's actually really, basically just a virus, to be honest. It's not a curse at all. And... It proves, in this, in this sequence, it absolutely absolutely proves that humans definitely think this is some kind of curse. Because there's a sequence where the humans try to kill Ikoma and Mume because they say they're going to stay in this car. And they're like, let's sneak up on and kill them. And, you know, they're, they're idiots. They don't stand a chance. But, and then you go to try to kill them. And Mume can just sense them because, you know, she's Kabaneri. She has all these heightened senses. And <laughs> as Ikoma chases after her, trying to get her to stop... Literally, like the print, the princess wore that pink girl, the girl in the pink kimono standing right there, and she's just like, she's just chilling. And Ikoma could have like gnawed on her. And the guy standing next to her bodyguard decides to not aim at Mume, who's trying to kill everyone there. He just decides to say, hey, I'm going to point this gun at Ikoma. The guy's not even looking at us and telling this girl to get back in the car because cause I'm nuts. And I think this curse is. I, like, I did not understand that scene. Just pay attention when you watch this episode when. They're at the, they, Mume goes to fight those guys after the train stops, and Ikoma's like, Mume, get back here. Literally, the guy's pointing the gun at the back of Ikoma's head, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, are you serious? <laughs> but, this episode was absolutely phenomenal, honestly. I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's absolutely phenomenal. But, we do learn that Ikoma has a special vow. And the vow was really, 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 really good. I'm glad that he made a vow because this, the prince, I can't remember the princess's name, but she set him up. And I kind of was like, at first I was like, wait, did she change sides? And like five seconds after, I was like, okay, she's setting him up in order to get the humans to believe. And she gets Ikoma to come out and say 
what he truly thinks about Cobain's and that he doesn't like Cobain's and that is his true enemy instead of instead of the, you know, well, it persuades the humans to think oh okay instead of him being our enemy enemy it's it's a Cobain he's, he, he's part Cobain but he's all right like and at the same time Mume is on the other side of the train now where everybody is during you know this pit stop to fix the water and like I don't know. She's playing with the kids, and then she's like, I'm hungry. Can I have some blood? She's like, I feel like Moomin's the type of girl that's just, she's ruthless, but I don't think she quite gets it. And that's really, I wonder if she's been a Caminari her whole life, so she kind of, she's, you know, she, she's dot. She thinks like a Caminari. She doesn't think like a human whatsoever and doesn't really, I, I feel like, it, I feel as if she doesn't really understand humans in general. But hey guys, as always, this has been Hex Competitive. And that ending, by the way, before I before I almost forgot just before we get out of here the ending with the one pregnant girl that Moo Man actually gave extra food to turning Cabernet was nuts I was wondering who the Cabernet was so she said her senses went off but that was absolutely nuts and I'm glad I'm glad they did it that was awesome and you can see Moo Man's face as she killed her she was Moo was like oh no you know she her face is dropped and Ikoma's trying to eat the princess now because like he's hungry I take it and I come was about to get ass whooped by Mume. As always, well, guys, this has been Hex Competitive. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Hex25, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.